Do you think women should use the same basic exercises at the beginning of the routine as men do? I think when um, men and women are basic trainers, in other words, when they first start training, the exercises should be very similar, yes. Mm -hmm. In other words, barbell movements and dumbbell movements as well as machines should remain the same for both? Right, um, because both men and women in the beginning are looking to basically strengthen and tone the muscles so that as they advance as trainers, they can handle more uh, specialized exercises, they can work on problem areas, and they can tune in uh, more directly to their specific aims and goals that they have for themselves. Mm -hmm. Most of the women that I've worked with and, and been involved in uh, bodybuilding tend to have specialized areas that they have trouble with, particularly the hips, the buttocks, right. and various areas, as the men seem to have a little more trouble with the abdominal areas. What would be the difference in exercises there? Eventually, um, they would specialize and work more on their particular areas of, of problem. Um, but in the beginning, um, as I said, they need a basic structure, um, enhancement of the muscle size and strength. Um, in fact, the problems that you're referring to are really problems of fat retention. Mm -hmm. In other words, the areas where men and women hold their fat deposits. And in fact, bodybuilding doesn't wear away the fat. Um, the aerobic exercise is probably more important to burning fat than the weight training exercises as well as proper control of diet. So even though it does help to do specific exercises for an area where you do have fat deposits, the exercises will um, tone the muscle, tighten the area, but they won't actually burn the fat off because there's no such thing as spot reduction. Mm -hmm. So if, for example, a woman has uh, a lot of fat on her gluteal area, um, she should go on, go on a diet to reduce the amount of fat she has on her body, and it would help if she did exercises that toned the muscles that are underneath that layer of fat so that when the fat disappears or is at least lessens, the muscle underneath the fat is firm and therefore the shape of the proper shape of the gluteals and the buttocks and the hamstrings show through. Other than the obvious, what do you think the anatomical differences between men and women and how would it affect the type of training they're doing for specialized areas? Well, of course, the, the major anatomical differences apart from the sex organs are that the woman has, tends to have wider hips, uh, the man tends to have wider, broader shoulders, um, this will affect the basic overall shape, the finished product, if you like, of uh, bodybuilding in the frame of the human body. Um, apart from the, the bone shape difference, there's of course a big difference in the hormone levels in the body. And this will affect the amount of muscle that a person can actually put on their frame. Mm -hmm. um, men have a higher level of testosterone, which is the hormone that affects basically, apart from secondary male characteristics, such as hair on the face, the deepening of the voice, etc., also affects how much muscle they can produce. Um, there is, however, an overlap, and I think a lot of people don't realize that not every man will be more muscular than every woman. Um, a woman who is predisposed to developing muscles, such as myself. A woman who might have, in other words, more testosterone, a higher yeah, level of right, testosterone in her right. body? Or uh, may have a, a structure um, which is uh, a somatotype, it's called, mm -hmm. which uh, means they are more easily muscle builders. Um, this person will develop more muscle than a male who has a very slender build and finds it very difficult to put on muscle. So there is, even though there is a difference in the range and levels of, of hormones in the body, there will be an overlap as to the amount of muscularity men and women can achieve. Mm -hmm. And this is preset. You can't really do anything about it. Right. That, that's genetic predisposition. Right. right. And there's really no control over that. Mm. But one won't really find out what he's predisposed to as far as genetics until he does make an effort, does try to apply the various techniques today. Is that right? That's right. In fact, I believe that it takes about three years for any person to really achieve anything near their genetic potential as far as muscle building goes. With that in mind, I do find it interesting that many of today's top female competitors in bodybuilding have achieved 
achieved such greatness in a very short period of time as compared to most of the men which have been compa uh, competing and training for over 10, 15 years. Many of the women have been training only three, five years. I think that maybe a lot of the women have been working out a lot longer than you actually realize. Um, they may have been doing another sport, they may have been involved in ballet, gymnastics, um, track and field athletics. I mean, I come from a background of track and field athletics originally, and I've been working out for about 14 years. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a lot of training. In fact, I've done a lot more training than some of the men that are in the pro ranks now. So, you know, I've had a lot of time to really develop my genetic potential and, in fact, to change my whole shape and structure around so that I've become from a powerlifting build to a bodybuilding build. Um, I think once that initial three years or so is over, then a person may have achieved all the size that they can. And, in fact, any changes after that period of time may be only... Um, in improvements in the shape, um, improvements in the quality of muscle, in the density of the muscle. In other words, the muscle matures. I think um, anyone who has been training for a long time can look at someone and tell if they've been training for a year, two years, or whether it's more likely that they've been training for 10 or 12 years, just from the density and quality of the muscle. Would you think it'd be appropriate for a female looking to get into bodybuilding to start off with perhaps some power lifting to develop muscle thickness and density? I think in fact it's absolutely essential for a woman in particular, for anyone, but a woman in particular to do some power lifting movements to do the basic muscle building work. I think that many women get into specialized movements too soon mm -hmm. and many try to compete too soon as bodybuilders. They work on trimming the body fat off before they really have enough muscle to show. And um, because women generally tend to start at a lower level of muscularity than most men, as a general rule, not in every case, but as a general rule, they need that background, that foundation work of building through many sets, many repetitions to build that basic foundation of muscle mass.